Welcome back to First Things First. Jason Witten just finished up his 15th season with the Dallas Cowboys, his 11th as a pro bowler. He's joining us now live from Minneapolis, side of Super Bowl 52. Jason, thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's my pleasure. How are you guys doing this morning? Yeah. We're doing great. We appreciate you uh, you getting up and talking to us. I was going to go somewhere else, but you know what? When, when you mention how many years you've played, it seems like a lot until you look at the quarterback who <laughs> is quarterbacking one of the Super Bowl teams and is still seemingly in his prime, if you will. Can you start for a little bit by, by uh, as all, with all your accomplishments, there's Tom Brady out there at age 127 who's starting for the New England <laughs> Patriots. Is that hard for you to believe? Yeah, it's amazing to see, you know, and I'm only a couple years behind him, I guess, but uh, I really think what he's done, you know, I mean, just beating Father Time the way he has, and, you know, I'm not real sure about the avocado salads and all that he's got going, but, I mean, the guy's just playing at an unbelievable level, and, uh, you know, he has the blueprint for all of us on how you extend your career and really how you can play your best, some of your best football in the latter stages of your career. So, um, you know, he's just a great example for all of us, especially some of us older guys who are trying to chase what he's doing. Yeah, and let's be honest. You live a regular, I mean, you work hard, but you actually live a regular life. You're only a few years younger than Tom, and you play a position where the, they're allowed to hit you, and you have to hit other people. Being a 36-year-old tight end is more impressive than a 40-year-old quarterback, correct? Give me some honesty here, Witten. Come on. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's hard for me to go against, you know, what he's been able to accomplish and really uh, that position. But, um, yeah, there's certainly a lot more hits that you take, a lot more, uh, a little bit more of the grind that you got to endure. But, uh, you know, hey, look, anybody that can play into their 40s, you're not going to hear me say much negative uh, talk about him. It's really uh, it's remarkable what he's been able to accomplish and any of these guys that we're seeing playing later and later. And I mean, you know, Chris, you started that blueprint a long time ago. I guess if you just keep scoring touchdowns like you did, it's hard for him to get rid of you. I, I, just, want, I just want to follow up real quick, if I can, Jason, about you. That, what are some of the things you've had to learn to do as your athleticism has dipped somewhat to still be as productive as you've been? Some of the tricks, some of the things you've been able to do to extend your career in I was joking but it's serious a very physically demanding position well I think that's just evolved over time I mean look when I was 20 years old coming out of uh, Tennessee you know that was some of those same knocks were the same thing I was never a guy that was just going to blow you away with speed and uh, it, it was always about the details the psychology of the game understanding routes and leverage and how you attack that and finding the spot, soft spots and zones and so uh, you know there's a technique behind all of that and so the older you get uh, the more you rely on those experiences, the more the details, your preparation allows you to sustain and have success. And, you know, I think that's what I lean on more now than ever and still feel like I can play the position at a high level. Wit, you played against the Philadelphia Eagles twice a year um, for, throughout your career. So you're very, very familiar with them. Even this new Doug Peterson regime that they brought in, we, we know that Nick Foles is the story there. Can he be productive as he was last week in the NFC Championship game. But I think you have great insight into playing against that front seven, that rotation that they bring in, and the secondary. Which one do you think in this Super Bowl 52, secondary or that defensive front, presents the biggest problems for Tom Brady and the New England Patriots? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, they're a top defense, and they've shown that all year long they've done that. I think it starts with the rush. they got a number of guys that can rush the quarterback and uh, they rotate those guys in. But to me, the, the secret is in their back end. You know, uh, a lot of not a, there's not a lot of known names back there other than Malcolm Jenkins, but uh, they do such a good job disguising their coverages, blitzing you, playing a lot of different stuff, so you, you really can't get a beat on them. And, uh, you know, Jim Schwartz is one of the better ones of doing that. And so when they're sending all these different coverages, partnered with this rush that's going to get to you, whether it's four-man, five-man rush, I think it goes to the back end. Uh, you know, they play at a high level, and they disguise it really well. Hey, let me ask you a question. Rob Gronkowski is not exactly out of concussion protocol yet. All signs point to the fact that he most likely will be come Sunday. I think it'll take an enormous amount of force to keep him out of that game. You know the position well. How big of a factor will Gronk be, do you think, on Sunday, if he plays? Well, he's huge. I mean, he's a, the, you know, the biggest playmaker they got on that uh, offense, and he's done it for a long time. Uh, Tom has a lot of confidence in him, and you see it in their routes. You know, there's such a trust factor between the two of them. And so, you know, to be able to move the chains, get them ahead of it, and then take their shots with Cooks 
Amadola and some of those other guys. And so I, I see him coming back. I mean, he's been a tough player throughout his entire career. And, uh, you know, I think he'll work through this and, and uh, he'll be at his best. So he's done it time and time again throughout his career. And uh, I, I'm certain that he'll be the same way, the type of player that they expect him to be. And just such huge plays throughout the games at critical times that he makes. And uh, it's testament to the way he works. For both teams in this game, I think their biggest threat in the passing game is their tight end. Everyone knows about Gronk, but Zach Ertz has had a tremendous year, had a really good NFC Championship game. What have you seen from Zach Ertz, who obviously hasn't been in the league as long as Gronk has, that impresses you, that you like, the parts of his game that you think maybe the average fan doesn't recognize? Well, Zach had a tremendous year, and I think really the understanding the route concepts. I mean, he's always been an athletic guy. He's got good speed. Uh, he can attack you vertically, but I think this year we've seen him attack zones, find soft spots, set up his moves. When he's running double moves, he's setting it up all together, and that's the art of a really good route runner. And you're seeing it, especially at the tight end position when the guy across from you in most cases is more athletic than you are. Uh, but I also think with this system, the RPOs, the, you know, the runs built in with the pass plays, just being at the right spot. You know, I mean, the, the linebacker, the safety, they have to make decisions on where they're going to fit these runs. And he gets a lot of catches off of those plays. And uh, I think it just shows his knowledge and uh, how hard he's worked at it to understand where he needs to be. And I think Nick has a lot of confidence in him. And when you run this type of offense, there's a lot of success depends on, you know, what the look is and where the linebacker, how is he trying to play it? And, you know, really they feel like you can't win. They always get in the, they hold the chess piece last. And, uh, you know, Zach's made some huge plays in this offense and tremendous talent. So I agree. I think both of them are going to have big games. With good news, bad news situation, the good news is we're glad to have you on the show. Bad news is those are all easy questions. Now here come the fireball ones. <laughs> I, I don't think you, I don't know if I knew you remember they were coming this. at some point. I, I, I don't know if you remember this, me talking to you and telling you my favorite team growing up was the Dallas Cowboys. I always wanted to wear that star. I was always attracted to them. Their, their formation, the linemen coming up, all the innovation they had, offensive football, like that was my football team. So America wants to hear about the Dallas Cowboys. Dak Prescott, an amazing rookie year. We saw the struggle in year number two. You being the leader of the Dallas Cowboys, I tell people that, that Witten is the leader. What are you and the other skilled guys trying to do to help Dak recover in year number three to get his career back on track where you think, and you've always in all the interviews said that you have utmost confidence in him, get him back to where you think he's playing to his potential? Yeah, well, I think what Dak's done, uh, you know, he's shown that he has all the intangible. He's tough, he's smart. Uh, he can handle adversity. Um, you know, he's a really good young leader. Uh, his ability to play make and, you know, forget about the last play. I mean, that's in this day and age, it's hard to see players at that position uh, make that transition and, and have the success that someone like Dak has. So, um, you know, I think offensively as a whole, when you don't have a success and you do play in a market like Dallas, you know, the first person that gets criticized is the, the quarterback and then, of course, the receiver. And uh, for us, we got a lot of confidence and know that they're. Uh, elite players for not only for our football team, but in this league and um, So I, I think you just get back to the drawing board. You all come together We look at it as a whole and say hey, okay We know we have to play better. We have to get our offense back rolling if we want to compete uh, in this in this conference in this division and so uh, I think it's just believing in him and understanding that you know We're gonna go back to work and fix it And so I think that when you have seasons you don't have success to the level of expectations you want You really just it's got to start with yourself and I think when we all look at ourselves and are critical with it and have the confidence to be critical of ourselves, and uh, when you do that, I found that uh, you're able to get through those uh, things that you don't do well and, and overcome it. Well, one of the players, when well, you talked about the, the quarterback and the receivers being the most important players on offense that really need to take a look at themselves and say, how can I play better? How can I help this team? We know that Des Bryant is coming in as a young player, wants to be coached, wants to be molded. But then you have a guy like, like Des Bryant. And we talk a little bit on this show about whether we think Des Bryant is going to, to, to stay in a Cowboys uniform. Does he have it in him to change and be part of what's happening? Or will he go somewhere else and we'll see like a second coming of Des Bryant? No one knows better about you know what's good for the Cowboys than you know we do, obviously. But you being an actual player, tell us a little bit about where you see Des Bryant as a key piece in this Dallas Cowboys offense, and will he have to change for him to turn his career around a little bit and really be a force on the team? 
Well, Dez is a really good football player. You know, I've seen him come in as a league as a 20, 21 year old guy and grow up both not not only on the field but off the field as well. And so, uh, you know, I don't know that there's a better guy going up to getting the ball and high pointing it the way that Dez does. Uh, you know, as I said earlier, when as a whole, when we don't have the season we want, and you look at the stat line, you know, it's easy to make kind of blanket statements on what happened. And and I think for us as a whole. Uh, we all are going to look at ourselves and, and say, okay, here's the areas we can all do better. And, uh, but, I, but I do believe Des is a premier player, as I do Dak is, and, and, and you can build your franchise around both those type of players. And so um, you know, I, I think that he can still play the position at an extremely high level. And uh, so we all just got to go back to work. And you know, those questions are going to be asked. And when, you don't, when you're not playing uh, in January and into the early February, so... You have to evaluate it. You have to be critical of it and understand that's, that's, that's where we're at. But I believe in Dez. I think he's, uh, he is one of the premier players at that position in our league. Jason Garrett's job security is something that the media talks about a lot. It seems to be a big discussion everywhere except for within the organization. The players never seem to question it, and Jerry Jones has been very vocal in not questioning it at all. So I ask you this. What are some of the things Jason Garrett does really well that you see that maybe the fans aren't seeing. That I'm just sitting there evaluating clock management and challenges on Sunday. Like you, you're with him every day. What are what are the things that you see that the fans don't necessarily see that make him the right coach for the Cowboys? Yeah, he's extremely intelligent. You know, he's played that position in this league. He understands what that looks like. Uh, he's a really good motivator, great communicator. Uh, handles the logistics and the, and the nuances of, of the, over the course of a week really well of getting everybody organized. And, uh, you know, he's, he's been a play caller in this league. He's, he's uh, some of his offenses in his system. And so I think he does a lot of things well. And, uh, you know, seeing that from time to time, you know, uh, you, you, you forget, you know, the I was coach of the year in 2016 and and so um, you know he has high expectations for himself he's a very confident guy and uh, you know he believes in delegating to his players and coaches and assistants and so he has a good system in place and uh, ultimately I, I know he he knows this better than I do but um, you know he we all have to do a better job of understanding what's wins and loses in 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 this league and I think he establishes that over the course of the week of what that winning formula looks like. So really good football coach. It's been a pleasure for me to be around him as long as I have. Hey, Jason, you've teamed up with the Schwans to, to let fans know that they deliver the ultimate home meal advantage with foods that are easy to make for game day or any day. It's a great program. Tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, it's a really neat deal we got going, and uh, you know, ultimately, to be able to with every new order, they're going to donate five dollars to the to the food bank here in Minneapolis. So a lot of great stuff. It's an honor for me to be able to team up with them, and so they can check out more at Schwans.com. Thank, well, Jason, Jason. thank you so much for joining us. I know the Cowboys were my team growing up, but I think one day you and I are going to be on the same team, bro. Oh, oh that's a Hall of Fame line. There you go, man. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Hey, much appreciate you stopping by this morning. Have fun there. Thank you. All right, guys. Come. All right, guys. Have a great day. You too, Jason. Coming up here on the show, a blockbuster NFL trade and what it means for the entire league. We'll break that down next. Who's who first right. first? You know who's never going to be on your team? Alex Smith. It's 6 a.m. 40 million Americans awake.